But at this stage, on to our location report, and a timely one at that, since it concerns the production of Drowning by Numbers, which opened last week. It was written and directed by Peter Greenaway, from which you may deduce that it's another of those cinematic puzzles of his that can either enchant, as in the draftsman's contract, or infuriate, as in the awful of Z and two noughts. In any event, we visited the location last November when, between hurricanes, Mr Greenaway was filming the climax of the picture on a dike somewhere in Suffolk. One, two, three, hold! Today we are doing a sequence which is quite close to the end of the film where all the various strands and ideas and resonances of the film are all being tied up. In this particular occasion we have a view which is looking towards the sea. In the middle is a sort of pagola effort, a strange sort of Boldaccino affair which is set up on a dike. The point of the um, scene is to show the antagonism between two groups of people each conveniently seven in number, and they play a game of tug and war. Put the baddies on the left, baddies are always put on the left, sinister, left-hand side, put the goodies on the right. You're very good in a minute, when I've done a few things. A few things, a few, Peter. So that we can contain seven on either side. Remember, seven in a bed, and the little one said, and action! Good morning, Majid. What's the game today? Tug of war. Oh. In honor of the dead, how symbolic. Life versus death. Good morning, Magic. I hope you've recovered. Don't look so miserable, you were sorely provoked. <clears throat> what shall I do about my eye? Ask Smut to give you some sheep's liver. Oh, rubbish, <laughs> Magic. Who's going to play this game? Good and evil. Who's good and who's evil? Depends on how you look at it. The centres of attention on the set are Joan Plowright, Juliet Stevenson and Jolie Richardson, who all play women called Sissy. Each of their husbands is inadequate in one way or another, and each comes to a sticky end. No smiling. She drowns him because he's a very bad lover. He's basically completely disinterested in sex, and he's an obsessive eater. He's also generally a pain in the neck. I say, please come swimming with me, please come swimming with me. And eventually he does come and I'm saying come on just a little bit further just a little bit further and then as he comes I give him a whacking great kiss and I take his floats off and tie his trunks around his ankles and leave him to sink yes they're moving out of unsatisfactory marriages aren't they um, they are I guess supposed to represent women in general. So you have, as it were, three ages of woman represented. So it doesn't take too much imagination to realize it's the same woman at three stages in her life. Okay, thank you. Here we go, attention. Give her, give her, give her. Matt! Bernard Hill plays Magit, a very busy coroner who successfully woos each of the sissies in turn. He's in love with them in different ways. He approaches them in different ways. Um, it would be unfair, I think, to the story in the film if I told you why and how. Oh, God, magic! you didn't invite them. No. They have a nose for a funeral. There are seven of them. Then we can't complain. I think it's something like five degrees cold up here in East Anglia than it ever is anywhere else in the country. Um, and also, not only is the film set in summer, but it is also set with all of us wearing no more than swimming costumes or light summer dresses. So we're having to battle against the elements, rather. The film was shot last November when daylight hours were short. Artificial light in the landscape has produced a surreal effect, a bonus for Greenaway, who's well known for his commitment to imagery at the expense of characterization. I think sometimes it's difficult for actors because his primary focus is very often visual. And uh, when, you, when you see the films, you understand why. Um, so we have to work very hard to bring as strong a kind of human presence to the film as I suppose he does on the visuals. Magic, what are you up to? The title, Drowning by Numbers, refers to a variety of mathematical progressions which pop up through the film. In particular, there's a pedantic visual representation of every number from 1 to 100. Well, yes, well, and so, uh, the actual 1 to 100 count in this film Again, is used uh, just to, as it were, to pace out the film. 
so that you know when you've reached 50, you are halfway through the film. When you reach the number 75, you know you're three quarters of the way through the film. And these numbers are sometimes manifest in the frame, very large, very big, and very upfront, but sometimes they need some searching out. They're hidden inside the dialogue or the lyrics, or they cover one little minute area of the actual film frame. So there's a game going on. It's a game which is akin to that which you might find in children's books, like Find the Magic Numbers, that sort of thread running through. And cut it, thank you. And I wonder what you make of all that.